Okay, so next we will prove a lemma. And for those of you who have my notes, this is a more abstract version of lemma 18.10. So let x be an arbitrary product. And let the collection of functions, f sub j, be the coordinate functions of a function f mapping y into x, then for every open set v in the product topology, on x we have that the inverse image of the set v under the map f is the same as an intersection of inverse images of some sets u sub j under the jth coordinate function where u sub j is an open set in the jth factor space and in fact u sub j is equal to the entire factor space x sub j for all but finitely many indices j in the indexing set j. So proof. So let v be open in the product topology on x. Then the set v is a product of some sets u sub j where u sub j is open in the factor space x sub j and in fact u sub j is equal to the entire factor space x sub j for all but finitely many indices j in the indexing set j. So the inverse image of the set V under the map F is the inverse image of the product of the sets U sub J under the map F. So let Y be a point in the inverse image of the product of the sets U sub J. Then F of Y is in the product of the sets u sub j. So f sub j of y is in the set u sub j for every index j. And hence the point y is in the inverse image of the set u sub j under the jth coordinate function for every index j, that is, the point y is in the intersection of the inverse images of the sets u sub j under the jth coordinate function. And thus the inverse image of the set v is a subset of the intersection of the inverse images of the sets u sub j. So conversely, let y be a point in the intersection of the inverse images of the sets u sub j under the jth coordinate function. Then the point y is in the inverse image of the set u sub j under the jth coordinate function for every 
index j. And so we have that f of y, which is the j-tuple whose coordinates are f sub j of u sub j is in the product of the sets u sub j. And hence the point y is in the inverse image of the product of the sets u sub j under the map f, which is the inverse image of the set v. And thus the intersection of the inverse images of the sets u sub j under the jth coordinate function is a subset of the inverse image of the set v. So we have demonstrated set inclusion in both directions. And therefore, the inverse image of the set V is an intersection of the inverse images of the sets U sub J under the jth coordinate function, where U sub J is an open set in the jth factor space. And in fact, U sub J is equal to the entire factor space for all but finitely many indices j in the indexing set j. Okay, so we'll use this lemma to prove a theorem. And again, for those of you who have my notes, this is a more abstract version of theorem 18.11. So let x be the arbitrary product of spaces x sub j with the product topology let y be a topological space and let the collection of functions f sub j be the coordinate functions of a function f mapping y into the product space x. Then the function f is continuous if and only if each coordinate function f sub j is continuous. So proof. Let the function f be continuous. Notice that the jth coordinate function is the composition of pi sub j with the function f, where pi sub j is the jth projection map Now since the jth projection map is continuous for every index j, and the function f is continuous, f sub j, which once again is the composition of two continuous functions, is continuous. So conversely, Suppose that each coordinate function
is continuous. And let V be open in the product space X. Then apply the previous lemma. The inverse image of the set V under the map F is an intersection of inverse images of some sets U sub J under the jth coordinate function where U sub J is open in the factor space X sub J and in fact U sub J is equal to the entire factor space X sub J for all but finitely many indices j in the indexing set j. So notice that the inverse image of the set u sub j under the j coordinate map is open in the space y for every index j since each coordinate function f sub j is continuous and in fact for all but finitely many indices j in the indexing set j we have that the inverse image of the set u sub j is the inverse image of the entire factor space X sub J, which is the space Y. So let the set I be the finite subset of the indexing set J for which the set U sub J is not the entire factor space X sub J. Then the intersection of the inverse images of the sets U sub J under the Jth coordinate function is the intersection for indices I of the inverse image of sets U sub I under the ith coordinate function intersected with the intersection for indices in the complement of I and J of the inverse image of the sets U sub J under the jth coordinate function. So notice that we are intersecting a finite intersection of open sets in the set Y with an arbitrary intersection for which the sets U sub J are all equal to the entire factor space X sub J. And so this is the intersection or indices I of the inverse images of the sets U sub I intersected with an arbitrary intersection of the set Y with itself, which is the intersection of the inverse images of the sets U sub I under the ith coordinate function with the set Y. Now since the intersection for the indices I of the inverse images of the sets U sub I under the ith coordinate function is a finite intersection of open sets in the space Y. It is open. 
in the space Y. And so the arbitrary intersection of the sets, or rather of the inverse images of the sets U sub J under the Jth coordinate function, which is the intersection of two open sets, is open in the space Y. And hence the function f mapping y into the product space x is continuous. Now the previous theorem does not hold in general if the space x has the box topology. And this is one reason that the product topology is preferred over the box topology for an arbitrary product set. So as an exercise, consider the infinite dimensional real space and let the function f mapping the real line into infinite dimensional real space be defined by f of x is the j-tuple that has identical coordinates, all of which are x, that is, f of x is the j-tuple for which each coordinate is the argument of the function. show that each coordinate function is continuous, but that the function f is not continuous. If the infinite dimensional real space has the box topology. And as a hint, consider the basis element B, which is the product of intervals from negative 1 over j to 1 over j for each index j. 